as a Grammy Seeker. Let's look at how to choose a research method. Before we choose a research method, we need to ask three questions. First is, is the solution going to be deduced or induced from the research problem? If it's going to be deduced, then we will look at the scientific approach. If it's going to be induced, we will look at alternative research methods. But the second question we ask is, is the sample size representative of the population? If the answer is no, then we will resort to alternative research methods. If the answer is yes, we progress to the third question and ask, do data distribution follow a normal distribution? If we get to use the scientific approach, if it's going to follow a normally distributed pattern, then we use parametric tests related to the scientific approach. If it is not, then we use the less sensitive types of tests called the non-parametric tests of scientific approach. Let's look at the alternative research methods. I have outlined here 12 research methods. But what's important for us is to inquire into what does the research question wants us to do? So, depending on what the research question that we are going to investigate, we will choose the research method. So, let's look at what each research method under alternative research methods will do for us here. Thematic analysis. We can analyze patterns or themes in data and inform theory. Second, discourse analysis. Here we make conclusions by analyzing the tone, styles, and rhetor rhetoric in text and talk of a phenomenon. Third is ethnography. We will look at ideas and beliefs of cultural growth. Fourth, Feminography. We'll be looking at how others have experienced a given phenomenon. There's variations in experiences and the perceptions form from that. Fifth is phenomenology. We can look at as researchers our own experiences about a given phenomena and the perceptions formed. Sixth is case study analysis. We can single out a case like a company and understand why and how a phenomenon takes place. Seventh is historical analysis. We can learn from historic, historical phenomena and make conclusions. Eighth, action research. We can learn to act in a phenomenon for us as researchers and for others as well by engaging in action. Ninth, grounded research. It is to look at qualitative data to the point of saturation and then build codes and from that concepts and develop a theory. Tenth, semiology is to make meaning from verbal and nonverbal communications as data. Eleventh, psychoanalysis is to make conclusions by analyzing unconscious mind. Twelfth, Content analysis. We can analyze qualitative data to inform a theory or to use content analysis to convert textual and visual data into, um, into numerical form for the scientific approach. 
Let's look at how we can apply these research methods. So as I said, the first thing is what is our problem statement? And then we can come to the next. Based on that, what is the research problem? Depending on the research problem, that we choose our research method accordingly. So our problem statement here is that we problematize that bullying by bosses is a serious workplace problem. Now we can ask different problems. We can ask different questions. So our research problem could vary. For example, if we want to inform a theory, we can ask a question, how well can conflict theory explain bullying at workplaces? Second, discourse analysis. We can ask a research question, what verbal and written tones and styles used by bullying bosses? Third, ethnography. What beliefs do migrants hold about workplace bullying? That's a cultural group. Fourth, phenomenography. We can ask a research question. What are the experiences exist among bullied victims? Fifth, phenomenology. What are my experiences about workplace bullying? Six, case study analysis. Who bullies who and why in XY is it workplace? We singled out a case for in-depth analysis. Seventh, Historical analysis. What were the bullying patterns at workplaces in the industrial era? Eighth, action research. We can ask what instigated bullying and how did victims successfully stop them? Ninth, grounded research to build a theory. What does bully mean to elderly people? So if there's no theory, we can look at the data to the point of saturation and build a theory. 10. Semiology. What verbal and non-verbal languages do bullies use? 11. Psychoanalysis. We can ask question, what dreams have bullied victims encountered during bullied periods? Twelfth, content analysis. Is the frequency of conflict utterances by bullied victims have a relationship with workplace absenteeism? It's a question that we can ask and use content analysis to answer. So, to a given research problem, we can come up with various research problems or various research questions depending on the research question we have to match with the appropriate research methods. So these are examples of alternative research methods.